talking about politics in the 19th century. Europe's government during the 19th century were very different compared to what we can see today. The French Revolution was able to impact most of the continent. Colonies started to have a period of change. That's when democracy started to emerge in countries. But still, there were some differences within each country. In Britain, democracy was kind of mixed. Reform acts turned out to be landmarks on the road to democracy. By the end of the 19th century, Britain was established as a parliamentary democracy under a monarchy. The known Napoleonic Wars lasted from 1803 to 1815. These wars were a continuation of the conflicts left on the French Revolution. These events happened when after the Treaty of Amiens ended and when Napoleon became powerful in France. The conflict began between the United Kingdom and France in 1803. In France, there were many changes and effects from the wars. All the, all the French military and the military systems were changed. Thank to thanks to this event, France became very powerful so fast and conquered most of Europe. After this, there were many mistakes from Napoleon Bonaparte and lost them quickly. After the Battle of Waterloo, which Napoleon lost on November 20, 1985, the Napoleonic Wars finally ended. How did the Napoleonic Wars affect the rest of Europe? Well, since the Napoleonic Wars caused a lot of uh, casualties, um, the rest of Europe decided to prepare in case of having a confrontation with these, with these forces. So they improved its military force. So I consider that the Napoleonic Wars helped the rest of Euro Europe develop a stronger uh, military force. Congress of Vienna, 1814 to 1815. The Congress of Vienna was an assembly or meeting in Austria of various European countries to reorganize Europe after Napoleon's reign. This Congress started in September 1814 and ended when Napoleon was defeated in June 1815. There, they reorganized the territories and accorded that peace should be established. Great Britain, Prussia, Austria, and Russia were the world world powers that summon and gather other European countries, supporting and promoting equality and progress among the nations. Congress of Vienna affected Europe. Well, the Congress of Vienna affected Europe in a positive manner. Since the Napoleonic Wars, nations in Europe decided that it was a necessary thing to establish peace between them. So, in the assembly that took place at the Congress of Vienna, Nations were able to accomplish this peace. The German unification was a process from 1841 to 1870, in which Germany's Democratic Republic and the Federal Republic of Germany were unified. In this process, Berlin became one city and Prussia allied with Germany to protect them from France. Otto von Bismarck was a prime minister from Prussia and he led the successful attempt to unify Germany through blood and iron and real political skills. The blood and iron were a speech given by Bismarck about the unification of Germany. Which were the main causes of the unification of Germany? Well, I think the main causes were um, some security matters of between the nations that were part of that unification and the power they will obtain um, with that being, with being part in that unification. And thanks to that, Germany will be considered one of the top countries um, in the world. The unification of Italy was from 1848 to 1871. It was a movement also known as Resurgimento, which is resurgence, that consolidated different states of Italy. First, Giuseppe Mazzini, an Italian politician, and his pupil Giuseppe Garibaldi, an Italian general, attempted to unify Italy by democracy and failed. Camillo di Cavour, the Prime Minister of Sardinia, finally could unify Italy with the tools of real politics under the crown of Sardinia. What were the benefits of the Italian unification? Well, I think the, the main benefit that Italy obtained by, by the unification was the 
concentrated power they will obtain by joining, by joining forces as one. The Korean War between 1853 and 1856. The Korean War involved an alliance between France, Britain, Turkey and Sardinia against Russia. Turkey initiated the war because Russia was expanding into the Danube region, which is now known as Romania. It was under Turkish control. Britain and France feared that Russia would later try to expand into the territory so they get involved also. It was fought in the Black Sea. Russia dropped out after all the military and political pressure. Still, France and Britain wanted to destroy the naval power from Russia in the Black Sea, thus leading to three main battles. The Battle of Alma on September 1854, Battle of La Clava on October, and Russian strike on November. Russia backed down in 1856, and the Treaty of Paris was signed. How many casualties were there in the Crimean War? Well, in the Crimean War, there were a lot of casualties. Um, for starters, we have... Uh, 450,000 deaths in Russia, about 21,000 deaths in Britain, and most of them by disease, but we also count them um, 95,000 deaths in France. After the independence of these two countries, the emperors joined both of their countries to start a dual monarchy. The conditions of these deals were both of the countries will share the military power, naval affairs, and finance ministry. Hungary really wanted to have an identical status of the Australian Empire. Both the Emperor of Australia and the King of Hungary ruled the state. What are the conditions of the Austro-Hungary unification? Well, after that unification, um, the conditions were in a collaborative matter, matter because both countries share like military resources, naval affairs, and also some finance ministry. The thing that we need to point is that both the emperor from Austria and the king from Hungary shared the control over the nation. The independence of Norway defines the dissolution between the union of Norway and Sweden. After Norwegian's independence, Danish prince ascended to the throne. With the signing of the new constitution, it established the dissolution of Norway and Sweden. On May 17, 1905, it is considered the Independence Day in Norway, which is actually the Norway's Constitution Day. Uh, yeah. Why is imperialism to you? It was a necess uh, necessary force that Europe had to apply to get what they needed. The Industrial Revolution changed so much how the economies work at the time that imperialism was the only way that uh, these countries knew how to solve the, uh, their lack of resources. How did imperialism affect Europe in late 19th century? Well, um, it did change all the geopolitics situation they had. Uh, in the end, they did need to cooperate with other countries, but in, they had to sacrifice Africa and Asia in order to get what they needed. So it did. Uh, create cooperation among them, but then it made them natural enemies to the rest of the world. How was the imperialism of Europe different from the one of other continents? How were they the same? Well, the European imperialism was much more aggressive. The United States did intervene and can be considered an imperialistic force, but at least they tried to uh, hide a bit more their intentions and did not try to control entirely what happened to the rest of the world. And the only imperialistic force that occurred, maybe we could say that uh, it was Japan. But other than that, all the imperialistic forces came from Europe. In which ways can we see imperialism in today's Europe? Well, you can see it uh, by the merge in culture and traditions you have uh, in these countries. For example, if you go to London, you will get to see a huge Indian community uh, living there and a fusion between their cuisine and their traditions. It's, everything is intertwined because of this connection. What was the main cause of imperialism? The main cause? Economic needs in my opinion. Which event led the way for imperialism and why? I'd say perhaps the, the Belgium intervention in Congo. When Europe got to see that it was easy for them to conquer the rest of the world, uh, that was it. Bye. That's perfect. Sure. Thanks. Thank you.